passed away. We wanted men. It's always fun watching Jason prepare for me to say this. Welcome to Smuggler's Galaxy podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. This is episode 165. I'm Glenn, and slapping his face to wake up this morning is Jason. Yep. Jason, it looks like you got new glasses. No, there's no? These are the usual. I need new glasses. This oh, is the okay. old fashioned. Uh, they're probably two years old, so yeah, okay. it's time. Well, that's about right. It sucks with insurance. They're like, yeah, you're good for two years with glasses. Well, did you get new glasses? Maybe you're fishing for a compliment. No, these are glasses okay. I've had for a minute. Actually, these are not new, new. They're new glasses, but they're the old, the same frames I had because I um, stuff had, I'd broken it or like there's screws. I stripped one of the screws and I took them to Pearl and I'm like, hey, I need, you know, could you guys fix this? And she was like, how how long have you had the glasses? I said, about a year. And next thing I know, she brings out a new pair of glasses and says, here you go. Mm -hmm. So always Pearl Vision. Yay. Yay. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag ad. Yes. This episode's brought to you by Pearl Vision. Dude, the ads have been kind of crazy lately on, on the podcast. Yeah, maybe we scale it back a little bit. <laughs> well, now they got it to where you could do like auto ad. And like I did that the last episode and we had like six ads. Yeah. It's like, man, it's only a half an hour episode. And how many it's ads little, are you going to put on here? It's a little much. Yeah. You know, we got to get that 50 cents. 50 cent. 50 cent. Got to pay for how, that Spotify. Not Spotify. It's pay for Zoom. Zoom. How, uh, how was your week? Did you do anything? Did you get anything? I had a decent week. I got... Of course, the audio is not going to work, but the bobblehead, oh. the little bobblehead noisy chopper thing at yeah. Walmart, I'd doesn't play that, it, but huh? Doesn't that have shades of Funko in it? It does. It does really it does. It feels like uh, Funko. Oh, I was like, why is it making noise? It's making noise. It's like, yeah, it does. It does feel like a Funko Pop, but it, it makes noise and you guys aren't going to hear it, so I'm not going to play it, but um. Yeah, it's basically just a big, uh, big old bobblehead of chopper. They did a chopper. They did an R two D two and a BB eight, and they make noise when you move the heads around. Yeah, I right. just thought those were interesting because I'm like Hasbro made a Funko. Yeah, it's weird, but it's chopper, man. I got to get all the chopper stuff. No, I mean, yeah, it's your guy. You got to get him. It's your war criminal. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's he's your guy, so you have to get him. Like I just said, I don't know what I'm saying twice, but yeah. Um... I mean, it's a cool thing to put throw on my desk and just have. Uh, what else did I pick? I picked up the Gambit, the X Men ninety seven or ninety nine or whatever. The Marvel Legends. Marvel Legends Gambit that just came out. I found him. I, I've been looking for him at Walmart, at Target, and then I I got aggravated and I checked Amazon and they were like, "Oh, we'll have it tomorrow." So I ordered it off Amazon, hmm. and I had it got it yesterday. And uh, yeah, I sent it to you. I sent a picture to you and Jordan. And I'm like, should you open it? And and you were just like, open it. So open it, do it. I was like, fine. Well, because nowadays everything, everything, you know, there's no need to keep things really sealed. No. Uh, because everybody's collecting them. And yeah. so I opened it. It's a cool, it's a it's a really cool figure. It's I actually did a re-sculpt on on Gambit, at least his head and stuff. I didn't really pay attention to the body to see if um how close it was to the other six inch figures, but the scale looks different. So I'm assuming it's a total re-sculpt um, on that figure. So, but anyway, so then I got me kick it. It got me like, you know what? F it. So then I went and I looked at my, uh, cause I had a Grim Reaper from Bill and Ted that's been in the box for forever and it's retail, you know, they're $30. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to open this too. Cause it has a, it had a, the football thing. Cause if in, in Bill and Ted in, uh, well, bogus journey when they play the grim reaper they play games with them and they have like the football game that he was playing and they had a you um, sink my battleship yes they had that so i decided i you know and they had the little football game 
So uh, long story short, I went to change one of the arms out, one of the hands out on him, and the hand got stuck in the arm. So I was like, I'll just have to freaking drill this out. So then I get the drill, and I'm drilling through the arm, and the drill pop, build drill, but pops out the other side of the arm. I was like, mother effer. Mm. So, but I had to, I, I messed with it for about another 10 minutes and uh, I got it fixed. But then thankfully you can't really tell because he has a cape that you can cover the arm up with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I was like, there goes 30 bucks. But, and, uh, but I, and I opened my Biff from the animated oh, the, Back to the Future. So that, the you know, one. it was an eventful day yesterday of opening toys. I spent like three hours yesterday making customs, Black Series customs. Dude, those look great. Um, I have a 3D printing friend who will, will rename, re, uh, rena re, remain anonymous if I could talk, because uh, he's got a he's got a resin printer. I have the uh, PLA PLA. Ooh, PLA. resins are what they professionals use. Yeah, so he's got the resin printer and he's working on a bunch of things, but he's also you know, in the on the side, printing some heads for me for customization. So I say all that to say that uh, I made a Nabron Le leads. That's the one with the gas mask and the forearms. It's usually packed with the uh, Cabe or Kabe. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, he, it's been an action figure before, so uh, I used a Leia Hoth body. And you pop off the torso, you put on the forearms, and you slide the torso back on. So it's kind of like a ring that goes around the figure with two extra arms. Got that one. Um, Labre? Is that his name? It's the devil character. That one looked badass, dude. That one I was very proud of because that one looks a lot like the character. And to get that amount of detail, my eyes were going cross-eyed. <laughs> Do you not have the little the the magnifying no. glass? No, it's it's like I had the vision of me like painting Civil War miniatures <laughs> as I'm doing this, and I'm like, I don't. I'm wanna gonna be... paint your pants silver. I don't want to be there, but I am there. <laughs> this is, this I is totally gonna... saw Steve Carell and Forty Year Old Virgin. Yeah, when you sent those pictures. Yeah, and to get the detail, like I'm saying, the the irises, the eyeballs on that particular character was difficult. I had to redo the eyes a couple times. I really wanted to get him looking side eye, like in the shot in the, in the movie, mm -hmm. but it was a win to get the eyes looking straight. And I had to redo it a couple times. I'm like, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, but I did use the emperor as a body. So he's, he's black. I didn't have to paint the body black. And then the emperor already comes with a, a cloak. All so right. just turn that inside out, cut off the hood, and it kind of makes the the cow not the cowl, but oh. he's got like a neck piece that kind of comes he, out. Yeah, he kind of looks like an old school vampire. Yeah, yeah. No, I just pulled up the art, the pulled up the picture, and yeah, he he does look good. And then uh, this one was just for fun. Blue Snaggletooth. There was a Power Ranger villain that was like a robot, but it was uh -huh. a simplified body, and that's kind of what Blue Snaggletooth has. So I made a blue snaggle tooth and then I painted a red snaggle tooth, but I'm waiting for his body today. I'm actually using a Luke Skywalker body. I'm going to pop off the head. I'm going to use some milliput because on his right shoulder, he's got a hump. Uh huh. So it's essentially just adding some clay to the body. So I'll have that. So that's why you want to record this morning so you can play with your toys. No, I got stuff to do today. <laughs> I got trophy bases to make today. Oh, yeah, you do. You got to make that crap for the wife, for my well, wife. Your wife. I also got the TVC Nisa in, in Wicket. I got the TVC, uh, the two-pack. I got the Obi-Wan Kenobi Darth Vader two-pack. And I also got the Sabine Deluxe boxed thing. Cool. Did you open that Sabine? No. 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 <laughs> I didn't open up any of those. Yeah, my wife was kind of mad when she got she got the Ewoks too, and she was like, "Oh, they're in a sealed box." So I don't even know if she's opened hers yet, but we've been working on the uh, on her collection well, room, trying to get everything organized for the winter social. Yeah, they are carted inside that box, right? Yeah, but I guess she. I think she was just like, "It's such a cool looking box," but 
I, I don't know what she was thinking, but we uh we had to move a bunch of her uh crap all a bunch of her stuffies downstairs because she had like all the ewoks and stuff so we moved those all downstairs so she can have more room to display like her higher end ewoks because she has a a couple of samples and then some uh like a princess nisa like the spanish princess nisa and spanish uh wicket that she put in cases like on top of her shelf so yeah and I did a little bit of re- rearranging a couple of weeks ago on my Bill and Ted shelf because I had all my hard copies sitting on like the very top shelf, which was, you know, when you're tall like me or us, you know, it's easy to look at. But if somebody's a foot shorter, you're kind of on their tiptoes. So I put them down a level and move stuff around a little bit to give it give it a little bit different look. But that's that's been the and just we went to a Halloween party last night. So that was interesting. But that's it. Nice. Yeah, it was more just you sitting around. You didn't dress like, up? Yeah. Give you one guess. I, I did more than what I was telling you about. Um I don't know, Bill. Did no, I, I did I did Marty because that's what I uh, had. I have it, Marty's easy to do because you get the, the white checkered white shirt. plaid shirt and the red uh, vest and you're good. Jean jacket. Yeah jeans and some nikes and you're good yeah well it was too hot to do the jean jacket Nikkei was that kind of writing yeah <laughs> um cool yeah, yeah. so that's why that's, that's why i was like uh, and then yesterday I, I went to the chiropractor so yeah chiropractor and a massage because my insurance you, you know you get the the it, towards the end of the year you're done with your uh deductibles yeah. so they're like hey yeah. you want all this fun stuff and i'm like oh Okay. Okay. I don't know so if they chiropractors like, are fun. It's scary. What the heck was that? Will I be able to walk? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it you feel so much better when you're done. I was busy yesterday in uh, Rogue Funland. I can't talk about what I did yesterday, but uh, to accomplish what I've accomplished, and, and it sounds like it's a lot, like it's not much that I accomplished, but I can't really share. I'll share at some point what to, what yesterday meant to me. And uh, yeah, you'll just have to wait till April or May of next year. And I will tell that story. But yeah. it's pretty spectacular. It's getting to the point with Rogue Fun where it's like Jason can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Jason will do it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm I, got, like, I got time. It's I think yeah. when we get to like February, March, I'll be like, I, I don't think I can do that. There's not enough time. Right. But. Well, maybe I could figure out some. Uh, maybe these fingers will find some talent and I'll be able to do some of that <laughs> stuff. But yeah. But yeah. So that that's exciting. <laughs> the thing that I can't talk about is really exciting. So I'm sure the listeners excited right now. Yeah. No, but um, it's pretty awesome. It. it uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you're just working. You're working on like a piece of swag for for Rogue Fun, which is pretty freaking amazing. It's basically what I mean, I'm. It's the participant you, gift. Right. You could say that much. I could say it, that. Yeah. And it, it's pretty freaking awesome. It's I, I think it's it's a one of us came up with that idea. I don't remember who, but it was just like, you know, that's an awesome idea. Let's go. I think you did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was I just going to say anything, but yeah, it was yeah, sorry, but no, you ran with it and you come up with like 99 percent of the stuff for this. And then uh, me and Narayan fight about it. But uh, <laughs> 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 fight in a good, loving, brotherly way. But uh, yeah, or the three of us will fight about it, whatever. But it, it's fun. Is it uh, time to complain about Hasbro? Yeah, everyone's favorite. Let's time. complain about Hasbro. Hasbro. Oh my god, there's hey. there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, freaking Hasbro and more freaking repaints. Yeah. So, a couple things happened this week. There was the MCM London. Uh, conference convention there and that was that was a hasbro booth that was marvel and star wars it wasn't just tip uh just solely star wars hasbro also had their 1027 event where they released more or revealed more about their stuff and then they just announced a couple extra things earlier in the week yeah so there's a bunch of reveals yeah they announced something crazy they announced stuff yesterday, didn't they? Yes, that was at the MCM London thing. Okay. So at this, like, and I don't understand. Like, 
at the start of the week, <laughs> they release something. Then they have their 1027 event, which is separate from the stuff that they released a couple of days before. Why not just save it all for that 1027 event and have this grand unveiling of eight different things? Um, uh. So uh, earlier this summer, they had their Star Killer Black Series Deluxe Pack, which came with Star Killer from Force Unleashed, two Stormtroopers, a bunch of, I guess, special effects that made it look like explosions and stuff. They revealed that Star Killer is coming alone in a package under the Gaming Greats line. This is Black Series. They're having the R4 6DO uh, droid, which was Grief Cargo's droid. It's a mixture of red, orange, and white. It looks. To me, it looks like candy. Like <laughs> it's not a knock against Hasbro. It's just the design of the, the the droid. It just reminds me of like childhood candy or something like that. I don't know. Right. They are re-releasing Darth Vader in the Black Series line. What? Dark- yeah. And the Mandalorian season three. And I was just re- relieved that they weren't going archive. That they're folding this into the regular Black Series line. So are they still that- gonna do the archive? I don't know. That I don't know. And then they had their 1027 event, which was... <laughs> they they announced the TVC Cassian Andor repack. Yay. which Yeah, which is a peg warmer, which uh, nobody asked for. Everybody has. It was released twice already because it came in the Black Series 3.75 box line. Then it was re-released for this. I don't understand why they can't just throw a new card back on it, at least to just give it some newness, give it some collectability. But whatever. Nobody did any. Yeah, nobody asked for that. Why would they re-release that figure? No, and they have a new show called Andor. So, like, if you're going to release a uh, Cassian, why not release one from the show instead right. of Rogue One, which you've already. They released six times. Or, sorry, uh, three, two times. Because speaking of six times releases, is Paz oh, Vizsla in the Black Series. God. But they're releasing them for 25 bucks, so maybe that's what their thing is. Is it 25 bucks? Yeah, that's what I saw on the email. Was It's $25. Um, Jedi Temple Archives has a good article about Hasbro in their, their third quarter and how... Um, they're okay right now, but it's not a strong uh, business for them. They've lost, uh, they've lost collectors, and it's probably because of the price hikes. So their remedy to make up that lost money is to raise prices, which is only going to, you know, abandon more fans because you're increasing prices and you're repacking the same things over and over again. There's no newness. There's no reason to buy. Right. It's mind boggling. Well, I mean, I, I've said it before and I'll keep saying it until Hasbro understands. People are willing to pay $35 to $40 for a figure, but you got to give them the quality and you got to give them, you got to give them $40 worth of product. You can't give a $25 Black Series, mark that up to 40 bucks with no, inter- excuse me, no interchangeable hands, no interchangeable head, where it's basically a figure and a weapon. Nobody's going to pay $40 for those anymore. Mm hmm. Because people have moved on to Four Horsemen. People have moved on. They moved on to uh, Fresh Monkey. There's too many other custom figure lines out there that are $35 to $40 where you get $35 to $40 worth of uh, value in those. Um, Jedi Temple Archives also said that one out of every four f- action figure bought is a Hasbro figure. So hmm. Hasbro's got a big market share. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and it yeah. But it could shrink if they keep doing what they're doing. Right. Well, it just also stinks because like the gambit I bought was twenty five dollars, and it had an extra set of hands. It had one extra set of hands so that they you could through like the throwing cards, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and it, it was a good looking figure for, for twenty five bucks with one extra hand or with some accessories. You're you're right there where it should be, but. Mm-hmm. You know, they're charging more up to $30 for just a figure. And, you know, I understand the 20% that they got to pay Lucasfilm, but maybe it's time for, you know, Lucasfilm to release some of the reins. But I don't, you know, maybe, you know, they also are like, hey, I'm making money hand over fist. So why change it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I was comparing it with uh, Marvel Legends to see if they had any repacks or repaints. It looked like it wasn't, but at par- as part of this 1027 event, it, it looked like it wasn't a repaint of Spider-Man and some pumpkin head guy, Jack o Lantern character. Mm-hmm. But the other thing they released is uh, are announced is the Mace Windu and the 187th Legion clone two pack. Uh, both are obviously repaint, uh, repaints because Mace Windu's already been out and the Clone Trooper is just the same body, new uh, paint scheme. So I know Mace Windu is a popular character and it's probably good that they put that out there because his original character was at one point selling for a lot. Mm-hmm. So I I can go with that repaint and repack because there's a demand for it. It's it's pause visa. Like at this point, I can just walk into any secondhand shop and get Paz Vizsla. It's not a problem to get that one. So, And it's not that expensive on the secondary market. So I don't understand why they keep releasing that character over and over again. Uh, because people keep buying it? But wasn't he at, he was at Ollie's though too, right? Wasn't he one of the ones yeah. at Ollie's? Yeah. So, But then they had their MCM London panel yesterday and they revealed a couple items first was the tvc count dooku which is new which is a figure that the fans have been asking for for a long time um the next was tvc finn from uh the force awakens he's been released in the black series box so there is some newness because this is a new card back still a repaint and repack it's 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 not exciting i would say Mm-hmm. I, when I first saw that photo, I thought it was a Finn from The Rise of Skywalker. And, and again, even though I don't like that movie, it's still a new figure from a new movie. Right. But th- this is just a repaint of the TV TFA one, uh, Force Awakens. And then for another time, it's a TVC Phase 1 clone trooper that's going to be released. Which is just another clone trooper body, you know, pumping them out there because it's yeah. quick and easy. Pay somebody um, three cents an hour to change it up. Interestingly, part of the pipeline reveal for TVC was Ezra, Kanan, and Zeb. Yeah. However, underneath it, it's a fan channel underneath it. So why are these fan channels? What's going on there? What are you, So that means that it's just available from a different retailer? or It means it'd be available through Hasbro. I'm assuming Hasbro Pulse Entertainment Earth and Big Bad Toy Store. It's not that you can go into Walmart, Target, and and find these. These are not going to be on the store shelves, allegedly. They've said that before with uh, figures that they were going to be European exclusives, and then they ended up in Target. Yeah, because they didn't sell in Europe. But that's not the only time that it said Fan Channel, because they also had the Captain Enoch and Thrawn Troopers revealed as TVC, and I believe it said like Hasbro Pulse, maybe the Shop Disney underneath it. Hmm. Which, all the other ones, all those Trooper packs are fan exclusives, but I was just kind of scratching my head like, so you're going to re-release, or release Ezra, Kanan, and Zeb, probably repacks of the stuff that they're going to do for the Ghost, or they're going to change them up a little bit. Yeah, they were saying, I think, that it was on C- they were based on season one. So, yeah, there's going to be something different, but it's fan channel. It just makes me wonder, like, what are, where are they going with this? Are they scaling back? You know, we've got the repay, repacks and repaints. Ha- uh, Jedi Temple Archives is suggesting that the the consumer market is shrinking for Star Wars. It doesn't look bright for 2024. And then you've got all these repacks and repaints coming out. That's not going to get people excited. It's no, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I was thinking that they may could be going the, the way of, of a lot of these other, you know, like um, mythic legions where you can only buy, you know, it's very limited uh, retail, but you've got to go online to buy them. So you think they may be going that way? Possibly. I don't know. I mean, if they're going to go online, I don't, I, it, it takes the fun out of it. But as long as you're not fighting, you know, as long as they don't sell out within seconds of, of going on sale, I don't, I don't really have a problem. I mean, I like going to Big Bad Toy Store because they do uh, what's called a pile of loot. So they don't send your stuff like, cause um, I've ordered the retro line, the retro Hera, Sabine, and Chopper from them. 
and uh, they can hold them for a couple of months for a bunch of stuff to come in and then they'll ship them or they'll ship them however you want. But, the, you know, and then, then that way you could save on shipping. So, you know, like my my Sabine came in, but the Hera and Chopper retro line hadn't come in. So they're holding the Sabine for me until Hera and Chopper come in and then they'll ship it. Mm-hmm. versus shipping everything individually so I, I i i i haven't gotten anything from big bag toy store yet but as far as the the ordering side of it i've enjoyed it and it also gets me in trouble because you start looking at toys and you're like oh that's not coming out to the end of the year next year so i could pre-order that and then you look and you've got 10 things pre-ordered at 35 bucks a piece and it's not fun showing that to the wife hey babe no. look, you know look what i got pre-ordered no, and then you come into this thing where it's like Hasbro needs to pace this out. I understand that they've got quarterly earning reports that they have to make, but to hit the consumer all at once with these pre-orders mm-hmm. is is not good. It's it's frustrating, and it makes people be like, "I no, I can't do this anymore." Yeah, you need to pace these out. You need to like not have everything come out in two weeks. Um, the other thing, uh, sorry, I. And I just have to remind the listener that I, I love the hobby. I love collecting things. I just don't understand the business decisions that Hasbro makes. I think they make quality product when they make new product. Um, and well, well, I'll save my my last complaint here for the last. So they uh, it's coming up. Uh, Black Series Padme and Anakin are coming out. And this kind of, I don't know if this was pulling on my nostalgic heartstrings because I kind of like these. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, Anakin from Tatooine and then Padme in that feed palace run up to the uh the the new gun ring and guys you know they were doing that chase and she was in that kind of maroonish outfit it's that version of Padme it's not in any of the intricate intricate dresses that she wore right I, hey if somebody wants a little kid they kind of surprised me because they didn't like the little kid Anakin but then it's the little kid Anakin that they were really nobody really liked that character, but yeah, but no one loved Hayden Christensen's Anakin either. And now look at all the fanfare that he gets. And I would imagine if Jake Lloyd didn't struggle with his mental illness, mm. he would probably be getting he would probably be getting the same amount of love as Hayden. Gotcha. I, that's my assumption. I mean, look at what uh, Ahmed Best is experiencing too, because he was getting a lot of hate for Jar Jar Binks, right? To the point where he just he even committed uh, ending contemplated ending his life um it got really dark and bad for him and now he's he's champion and and reveled in in star wars fandom so right he's hosting a kids tv show kids tv show he made that appearance in the mandalorian so I, i would imagine the same would be for jake lloyd if if he was able to participate in that kind of stuff i still want to see him hand uh uh, Ahmed Bess's character, Jedi character, hand Grogu off to Jar Jar. I think that'd be funny. <laughs> Would be. <laughs> the final reveal uh, was a pipeline reveal for Black Series. It was the Clone Trooper and Battle Joy 2 pack. Again, both of those are repaints. In episode three, Palpatine. So I would imagine it's the same body. I wonder if he's got different cloaks, different soft goods. Mm-hmm. And then. So Patrick has been, if you ask Patrick from Hasbro what his favorite figure is or what his favorite character is, he would say Jorah Sabah, the crazy uh-huh. lunatic Obi-Wan Kenobi-like Jedi from the Thrawn trilogy, the original one, Heir to the Empire, Last Command, and Dark Forces Rising. <laughs> he made a Black Series figure of that. There's a four-pack coming out with Luke, Luke, Mara Jade, and Jorah Sabah. I'm actually excited about this one, but I want to. I'm sure it'll be a hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean it's four figures. Two of them will be repacked because it's Luke and his clones. So I mean, <laughs> and they did. Them, I'd I'd be interested to see what Mara J they did too, because they've done a, they haven't done a Mara J Black series, but they've done like the deluxe figure, right? Yeah, I'm hoping Mara J gets pulled into the new Filoni stuff. And I, I would. It'd be interesting. They would definitely have to retcon some stuff if they pulled Mara J in. But now that Patrick has got his life wish of putting George Saboth in an action figure line, maybe it's time for him to mosey on over to another <laughs> toy line and let <laughs> someone else come in and give some freshness to this line. 
I hate complaining. I, I love the hobby. It's just, I, I don't understand this. Like it's repack, repack, repack. Where's the newness? Right. Like why, why are we repacking Cassian Andor and, and Finn? I would prefer them to save the money of re-releasing those two figures and give us one new figure. Yeah. I'm pulling up Hasbro Pulse because I'm just curious. I know I saw that they released uh, a new HasLab for Ghostbusters, and I thought yeah. they might have done another one. And I was just curious. I thought they might have done one for GI Joe, but I guess they didn't. The PKE meter and the uh, Ghost Trap are the the latest HasLab from from Hasbro. Uh, the Giant Man went through. I was asking Tony. Tony's the resident action figure. Uh, knowledge guy <laughs> go-to guy when it comes to lines outside of star wars for me at least and uh he was showing this one website that was tracking the sales and saying that was probably going to go through and it did but it was just really slow and i i just for a 200 dollars figure that's the biggest giant man that's ever been produced you know it's ant-man when he turns into the giant um i was just surprised that it was you know five hours away and it still had him funded right it's only two hundred dollars, which I say only two hundred dollars. It's still a lot of money, but um, I mean, it's not, it's not. I'm sorry. It's not three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, right? And and I think two hundred dollars is about right for that figure, right? Because if Maybe. they would have done the Rancor for two hundred bucks, the Rancor would have funded. Yes, sir. I'm so, so Haslab. Okay, go ahead. And so that's all I that's all I'll have to say about Hasbro. We could be paused hey, right now. Gum that uh I tell you what, man, Ghostbusters fans are awesome because it's uh already at eighty eight hundred back eighty eight thousand backers with forty three days left. And how many does it need? Ten thousand. And how much is it? Three hundred dollars. Was it any uh, extra tiers or anything? I don't see any extra tiers. But I mean, for three hundred, because you the the backpack was like three hundred bucks, right? It's an easy cosplay too, and it, and they look pretty official. Yeah, and but then go, wait, wait, I'm sorry if if the Ghostbusters people or anything like five hundred first are gonna have to change something on it. Yeah, I saw like I was about to say I saw YouTube videos where people unpack their their Ghostbusters pack and then they start adding uh, flakes of carbon to it to make it look like actual metal instead of. Mm -hmm less plasticky and they, they upgrade it right but it, it's a great base to start from yeah i mean it's if i was if i was a ghostbuster fan it, it's it, it looks pretty good on pictures i'm a ghostbuster fan i was actually wearing my ghostbuster shirt on friday but i can't i can't support all these lines yeah. <laughs> um i did learn that a remastered version of dark forces will hit pc and gaming consoles on february 28th of next year and people will learn who Kyle Katarin is again. The game uh, is the one that introduced me to Dark Troopers. I remember the days when there was Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. And then they come along with this Star Wars version of that called Dark Troopers. And I'm like, this is my game. Yeah. And then the second one that came out. And I remember the cut scenes were very cinematic. very It was CG, but you're like flying through a city. Maybe it was Coruscant. I can't remember. I, at the time, I was like, this is amazing. I wonder what would happen if they put this in a movie. And a couple of years later, we had uh, the special editions. And you were able to wield the lightsaber for the first time in Dark Forces in a 3D environment, at least for me. Right. I still enjoy seeing Coruscant on screen. No matter how many times you see it, Cor there's something special uh, about Coruscant to me. I don't know what it is. Or maybe it's just because mm. you hear so much lore you know, from the EU about Coruscant. And uh, just the way that it's a, you know, basically building on top of building on top of building, um, and it's just it's, it's always something. Whenever you always, you know, you could as soon as I see Coruscant, it makes me I'm like, you know, like Scooby Doo. <laughs> ruh, ruh. <laughs> We're on Coruscant. Ruh, ruh. I love you, Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about uh... Coruscant. Would you like to go to Coruscant for a Scooby snack? Yeah. Bro. But I want to, yeah, Cor yeah, I guess I, I don't, you know, you want to go down in the, the mid levels of Coruscant and to where it's not really dirty, but you know, you, you're not in like the 
you're somewhere in the in between. Yeah. Um, it was interesting because I finished that, and we don't report on uh, Gentle Giant that often, mm -hmm. uh, but they did announce a Nabrun, Nabrun leads um, bust. That's the character with the gas mask, the forearms, and like a spacesuit. She's got the big kind of yeah. pointed head that's a brain. Um, they made a bust of her for 120 bucks. It looked pretty sweet. And it was like, I just finished painting this thing and I go check my email and like, it's available for $120. I'm like, oh, I don't need to go down another avenue. But if it if I did, it would be the bust of Cantina Aliens from from Star Wars. Yeah, I wanted to go down that avenue with Rebels, but it's just it's a lot when they're a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars a piece. That it, it's just, it's too much money. That adds up. Yeah, it adds up real fast. Even though I have the Thrawn, uh, but yeah, it'd be it'd be fun. Eh, I guess we'll just wait and see what happens. And then Matthew Vaughn is out. He's the director of X Men First Class and the Kingsman series. He's got this new one called. Um, Oh, what's that pandering called? It's a spy movie, but it's it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, he's got a new movie coming out. He spoke to the Happy Sad Confused podcast and suggested that they reboot Star Wars. He oh, said, yeah. for me, doing a Star Wars movie is to play the with the characters that I loved. If they said to me, Do what you do, do you want to reboot Star Wars and actually have Luke Skywalker solo invader and do your version of it? Everyone would say you're you're an idiot to try, but that would excite me. Why are the characters so hollowed that from 1977 that you can't redo it for a new audience? And I just, I don't want to see that. I mean, they already have perfection. They, they, the original trilogy is it. And I understand what he's saying. He's saying like, how do you introduce old stuff to new audiences? That's why Disney's going back and they're, making live action versions of their animated stuff because kids don't want to see old animation. Right. But they'll go see a new movie. And so like Harrison, my son, thinks the original trilogy is boring and he would prefer the sequel trilogy. Um I don't agree with that. I think the original trilogy is perfect. <laughs> but like why not remake they tried to remake The Wizard of Oz. They made those legacy sequels. They made Oz the Great Powerful and then Return to Oz. They made, um, there's another one that I just thought about that they remade. But yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. I'd go see it. I'd enjoy it. I probably wouldn't complain. At the end of the day, I'd probably go back, watch Empire Strikes Back, then watching the remake of Empire Strikes Back. It's not that the characters are hollowed. I think like Aaron, Alden Ehrenreich did a great job in Solo. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see Harrison Ford. Yeah. I love Solo. I love that movie. I loved Alden Ehrenreich. But to have a third character come out, I don't know. James Bond is the one that I was thinking about because they reintroduced James Bond every four or five years. After they finish a series, it takes four or five years. They introduce another one, you know. I'm going to play devil's advocate on this one. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, no, because it's boring if we agree. Yes. Um, no, I really think it could help Star Wars uh, because as much as I enjoy those movies, sometimes they do get boring. I mean, I enjoy the 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 stuff that's on TV right now more than the the movies. And I mean, why not try to reboot it? How many times have they rebooted Spider Man? They reboot. It feels like they reboot Spider Man every five to ten years. Yep. Uh, you know, and, and why not? I mean, it could be the kick in the ass Star Wars needs to to be introduced to a new generation. Uh, I mean, I know we have it with the with the stuff on the on the television, but you know, it, it could be a, a a way to maybe retcon some of the issues we're having in in the uh, Filoni verse. And I mean, if they do it good, oh snap! Hold on, there we go. Sorry, hit the wrong button. Uh, if they do it good, who who can? <laughs> you know you disappeared for a minute and i didn't want i was on a on a, on a vent oh. i didn't want to lose you but um you know if they do it right i i i really think that the you know the han luke and leia uh we've already recast chewy and nobody really said anything or oh, chewy looks a little different but those three guys the, you know they need to be recast because they're they can't you know like we've lost carrie fisher and Han, you know Han, Harrison Ford, and and um, 
Mark Hamill's old. They can't redo those characters. They can't keep playing those characters. And, <clears throat> I, you know, I think they shot themselves in the, that, that I, the, 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 Alden Aaron Wright playing Han Solo was not the, the, the reason the solo movie didn't do good. It's not that, you know, but they're blaming it on that. Mm-hmm. Kathleen Kennedy's pointing her finger at that going, we're not going to recast because look at this solo movie that didn't do good, but we released it six months after another movie that we, you know, we released it sandwiched in between a bunch of other movies that, and people were uh, fatigued with, yeah. you know, and, and as that, that was a great movie, but then, you know, you had, you had episode, what episode seven or whatever. And then you had solo and then you had episode eight. And they all came out on the same year. I would go for. So I don't. I'm not. I don't like the idea of remaking a New Hope, uh, Return of the Jedi, and uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back. But if they were to recast the characters for the Filoni universe, and so if we had that movie, we had a new Mark, a uh, new Luke Skywalker, someone else playing that character. If they brought Alden back, I would love that. I I wish that we got a sequel to Return of the Jedi 15 years ago. Um, that's just not going to happen. It's not the world we live in, but I'm okay with that recasting it, but I don't know if they need to remake it because using your Spider-Man analogy, Spider-Man's got six years of storytelling. He's got countless villains. You can reintroduce Spider-Man every 10 years and drop in a new villain that people's never seen before. So maybe they've seen Spider-Man, but they haven't seen the lizard or they haven't seen the vulture or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't do that with Star Wars because it's going to be the same story. Star Wars is a fixed story. It's not 60 years of storytelling. And Luke Skywalker doesn't have countless villains. We can introduce Luke Skywalker again and and you know go up against King Wampa or whatever the case may be. See, that um, was my that was my other thought was that yeah, with Spider Man, you have all the comic books you can go back to. There's not really that in Star Wars unless you want to reintroduce the EU. I I love those scenes in The Mandalorian with uh, Mark Hamill essentially coming back to play Luke Skywalker. It's just a dream come true to see new Luke Skywalker stuff because it does feel like when I read uh, The Heir to the Empire, for example, mm-hmm. those are the characters that I have in my head. Right. Um, and I've seen Return of the Jedi. I've seen the trilogy a billion times. I know those like the back of my head. To see something new, like in The Mandalorian, it blows my mind. And I would love to see that in a movie. What if instead of doing A New Hope, they did like the side of A New Hope? You know, like the certain point of view, did it from a certain point of view? Yeah, I've been thinking a lot. I've gone down the cantina rabbit hole. And as I make these characters, I'm like, I would love for a limited series or a movie. Like, it doesn't have to be eight episodes it could be four episodes it could be two episodes but like stories from the cantina like a movie about tales from the cantina and you know you follow us a, a bounty hunter around and then something happens to him and you follow another bounty hunter around or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be i would love something like that yeah and then you could still have the the a new hope or happening in the background you know yeah, but you're seeing you're seeing it from the ground floor instead of from thirty thousand feet yeah, and if you're really smart, you could do something like when um, Panda Baba attacks Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi takes out his lightsaber and he causes a commotion. It's a distraction. And so if you're really smart in storytelling, something happens to your character in the cantina. They commit something and they get away with it because a distraction just you know happens to, to pop up at the moment of opportunity. And he's able to, he or she, whoever the character is, is able to kill their target without anyone ever knowing because obi-wan kenobi caused this distraction yeah i i would like i think that would be fun to see if if they were gonna see now we're going back and forth now but yeah i mean i I was gonna say (laughs) reboot but it doesn't make sense you know reboot is starting from scratch but you know to, to see a certain point of view movie i think would be cool uh because that's stories we we haven't told or, or i mean they've got the eu but they poo-pooed on the eu and then i don't think they're going to go back on that unless feloni starts well he already is picking and choosing from the eu but you just you you never know what uh what he's going to do next guillermo del toro was definitely working on that job of the hut movie yeah and he had to step away 
and it's just not going to happen at this point. But it was it was about the rise of the huts, the heart, the hut c- cartel. You want to see that stuff, man. But for whatever reason, they decided to shelve it. And it's like you've got an Academy Award winning director who is visually, he's visually incredible. He's got a visual eye. Mm-hmm. All of his movies look incredible. He's big on the whole character, not using CG, using real people to portray characters, which would be perfect for a Return of the Jedi style movie. Um, you've got fans that are just hungry for original trilogy content and they complain because they get more modern Disney stuff. So I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I would be down for that. I mean, we want to see, I mean, the Mandalorian scratched the surface of dirty Star Wars. There's there's a whole another level of Star Wars that we hadn't seen anymore. And there was a video game that was like, whatever 1980 something i don't remember it was a numbers or something uh but it was going to be the dirty star wars and they canceled it that's what i love about coruscant you know you go down enough levels it's 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 crime and villainy you know scum and villainy down there so if we circle this back around because we've kind of talked about spinoffs what about the original trilogy what about remaking that are you okay with that or are you just playing devil's advocate just because it's conf- uh good podcasting a little bit of both. Uh, I I think if they did it right, I, I I I it may be what Star Wars needs. I I, I don't know it needs. I don't think it needs to be a shot for shot, but I think they could redo it and add some stuff to it uh, to make it, you know, maybe speed it up a little bit, make it some of the action, you know, a little bit more actiony <laughs> to put it, you know. Uh, but I've also. There is something special about Star Wars, but I mean, and also you need to look at before the advent of VHS, they would make remake movies all the time because there like was no way to keep the movies alive. Like what? They would replay movies. Well, no, they would read. They did it. They used to before, you know, 50 years ago, before VHS was around, they take a movie from the 20s and redo it in like the oh, 40s yeah, and like- 50s. Yeah, they would do some of that. Like Ben Hur is one of them. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. You know, I'm. I'm sure if I did some research, I could figure it out. But that's how they kept movies alive. Was they'd re-release them or re-reboot them, or they'd reshoot yeah. them, but they were basically shot for shot. Yeah, uh, Ben Hur was a silent movie. Um, it's that's a tangent. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then they remade it, the Charlton Heston one. Right. But yeah. I- I I I I think I would be like, oh crap, but I also think Star Wars needs it. Star Wars needs a shot in the arm, even though we we maybe maybe wait another five to ten years before they did it. But um, I don't see. I, I I think it could benefit Star Wars. I think right now is the wrong time to do it though, because we are oversaturated right now with Star Wars content and with the fact that you know with. With all the failures that Star Wars has, it's not the right time to do it. Yeah. And when I say failures, I'm talking about the Disney stuff, the the Star Crews are failing, the the stuff people. that hasn't resonated as well. Correct. That's what I'm talking about. There you go. Stuff that hasn't resonated with people. You need to. I think if I think if they said they're going to reboot, a remake, a New Hope, the original trilogy, people would be up in arms about it mm-hmm. right now, or they'd be poo pooing on it, or they did come out and be the greatest thing ever. But, I mean, it could be like baseball. I mean, you know, baseball's changing because the younger generation hates baseball because it's too slow. Well, they did. Someone on YouTube recut the whole Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi scene from A New Hope, and it's a lot faster. There's more dynamic camera camera angles. Have you yeah. seen that? No, I guess I, I've seen, like, bits and pieces of it, but I yeah. haven't watched the whole thing. So um, it's, it's, it's just it's more exciting. It's kind of cool and different, but at the same time, you know, it's it's not needed. It's too much. It's um, extra extraneous. What's what's the word? I don't know. I You're don't know. the I word can't guy, remember. dude. No, well, today I'm suffering from words because I'm not <laughs> I'm not fond of the words that I need. But not, yeah, no, it's it's just it's not needed. It's gratuitous is the one I was okay. looking for. Gratuitous shots and and action. But I think it could benefit from something like that. Maybe. I mean, truthfully, the only kids that 
I think really enjoy the original trilogy would be people, you know, that were raised or like our would, would be like our kids, you know, if, and if they were raised on it you know, with the nostalgia, like the 70s music or whatever. I mean, yeah. even 70s mute. Well, no, because they redid the special editions, but I think they they ruined it. But I was just thinking they remaster music all the time, but it's not as bad as the the, the special edition stuff was like it was too the technologies were too far apart to make a mesh. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it you know you're you're talking twenty years difference between the move what was shot and the new stuff, and George Lucas just was like, we're gonna do you know. It felt like he was just like, we're going to overdo it or, you know, the new stuff's got to be so awesome. And then it just, it didn't feel right. Yeah. Well, in conclusion, uh, don't remake it. (laughs) Make sequels. (laughs) Make more of the new stuff that people hate. Right. Or or make stuff, make a new hope 2.0 or whatever. That's I'm not, I'm not, I didn't say it right, but. Make well, a, a new, new hope, hope 2.0 is the force awakens it's oh, quite yeah, literally the exact same movie pace I, for pace i was so pissed Deep off about beat. force awakens because you, yeah you're right you're you're it's even down to the 15 minutes that oh it's going to be in target in 15 minutes and you're like guys this yeah. is a new hope all over again come on well it's got the droid it's got the secret plans it has to take it to the resistance r2d2 bb8 yep it's got a, a main character from uh sand planet who needs to help escort that droid to BBA? It gets uh our main character gets a lightsaber. You know, during that they get their weapon, their magical mm-hmm. weapon in the middle of the movie, Luke Skywalker and Ray, and they quite literally get the same lightsaber. Right. Um uh there's an assault, there's a there's a mystical being that gives them some knowledge which was you know maz kanata or yoda or ben kenobi the same kind of character um there's a major battle station that's got a major a giant battle station is shot the size of a moon or a planet which is you know force awakens as a planet with a death ray in the middle of it that'll blow up buildings um or planets you know in a new hope it's it's just you know you got to be in striking distance in the force awakens it manipulates the universe somehow and shoots across the galaxy to the point where everyone can see it and it can destroy planets from far away it's but it first has to eat a star yeah. and then there's the attack onto the planet to blow the they planet gotta bomb it a certain way sorry went through a tangent no it that was my number one issue with the uh, force <laughs> awakens conclusion. it was and i didn't realize it till he did the death star run and you're like but then I heard the same thing about Top Gun too. It's like that's it just Star Wars, but with fighter jets. Yeah. But then you could go back to another war movie, and it's the same. I've I've seen shot for shot of this. There's this, a, another war movie, and it's almost shot for shot of the of the the uh, Death Star run, the yeah. final run of of an old school war war movie. And I don't know what it is. Um, I did write down. I was on the tangent of Hasbro. I forgot to talk about my wish list because there are some action figures that I feel like. I haven't been made that should be made at this point. Okay. Um, and I'm talking about TVC and Black Series. First of all, I feel like this is a major issue because this character has been in multiple series. And that's Carson Tiva. He's the, the, the ex- old guy, right? The, the X-Wing pilot? Yeah. Yeah, who was in uh, but, Ahsoka and Mando. But they're doing a, a Black Series helmet of him. We get the role plate helmet because that's a quick repaint from the... How long is that going to be Wolf Ollie's? and Luke Skywalker and Wedge Antilles? It's going to be, it'll be there. But Carson Tiva doesn't have an action figure yet. Um, Elia Kane and Doctor. Hey, and Perk. you know what? That's an easy repaint. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Elia Kane and Doctor Pershing are two important characters in the Mandalorian. They don't have um, action figures yet. Peli Mato. The Amy, the Amy Sedaris's character. Yep. I think she needs a figure. Uh, I put Finn <laughs> uh, Return Rise of Skywalker <laughs> just because uh, one of my favorite character designs was Eloatsi from The Force Awakens. It was like a bullheaded kind of looking alien. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like an action figure of that. I figured that would be an easy repack. You know, you use the five POA version of the head and you put it on a X-wing pose body 
know, Poe came out with an X Wing body. Yeah. Just uh-huh. reuse that, pop the new head on, and you've got a new character. And then Hammerhead's coming out in Black Series, but we need a TVC version. They have to have mold somewhere because yeah. they they did release it in a three pack. They just haven't released Hammerhead on his own card back. And then you, finally, yeah, you think they would though? Well, whatever. I don't, Snaggletooth is the last one. Just yeah. throwing that out there. Yeah, no, I don't have a wish list because I'm not in the deep end like you are with collecting. I'm, I'm, I I'm wish at the point. Jason would shut up. That's my <laughs> wish list. Freaking Jason and his TVC stuff. Golly. Well, I, I'm, I'm at the point now. It's like I'm, I'm easy with my stuff, and they're re-releasing more Rebels stuff. So I mean, I'm happy. But, um, yeah, I. I don't know. I don't really have. I mean, a, a Hondo. A, 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 they already released the Black Series Hondo, but maybe and a TVC. Oh, did they do a TVC? Yeah. yeah, they did because it's in the the BMF the Falcon yeah. that you, that you have. Which yeah. I wish I'd have, I wish I'd have had the money for those, but I have no space for it now. So because uh, there was a, I remember when they were at Target for like two hundred bucks. That's when I got mine. Yeah, you were actually. I think you got the one that I was offered and uh, offered a Target. Well, it was one of those where somebody hit me up and was just like, "Hey, that's a Target for two hundred bucks," and then you ended up with it. But I'm, I don't don't quote me on it. I'm not sure, and I'm not going to name names. But uh, <laughs> speaking of figures, have you seen the uh, sideshow Thrawn? I don't know. Don't it so. looks it looks better than the live action Thrawn. Oh. It's the same character, but it's like because sideshow has been doing like some ultra ultra realistic stuff lately that's it's scary how realistic they are mm. like mm. the Hera is scary looking it's it's like they just put her face on a on a figure uh but the thrawn looks the thrawn the sideshow thrawn looks better than the live action thrawn i think i probably did see photos online i'm just not remembering them right now i did see something yesterday and i was the thing that i was focusing on was the hair because it looked like a hair piece in the move in the show but not on the action figure it looked real so well then that's what you're talking yeah you're you're you were you're talking about the same thing i'm talking about okay. it yeah. it's like they fix they were able to fix the stuff we didn't like about the live action thrawn on on this figure and it just for yeah and and, and i don't know i love the sideshow stuff but you're talking two three hundred dollars a piece for that and yeah. the couple of sideshow pieces i do have uh, cause I've got the captain phasma that they gave me at celebration. And when you get it out and play with it, you're like, it's not really worth the two. I mean, it's a great looking figure, but I'm not going to pay $200 for it. I'll give you 20 for it then. Um, sure. $20. You're going to throw your next thing. I know. Oh, look, the PayPal notification. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Cincinnati. Toy show happened. Well, it's happening today, but last night was room sales, and I saw people were up until three thirty. I'm like, I don't, I need my sleep. I become a crabby jerk when I don't get sleep, dude. It it's crazy. I'm so. I want to be up there right now. Next year, huh? We'll have to make it a priority next year. Yeah, next year. My next year is getting eaten up real fast. Um, Big vacation, huh? It's my 20th anniversary. I don't know if I'm going to be going to the Cincinnati Toy Show next yeah, year. Yeah, so I may. Well, when it's our 10th anniversary, 10th anniversary yeah. for us, so we're in the same boat where we're planning uh, like a week and a half trip. So it's like I've got to cancel, not cancel, but I've got one trip planned for uh, Chewbacca, and then it's Mandy's 25th uh, high school reunion. So we were taking a couple of days to go down to that. And then we've got the big trip uh california trip in october and then rogue fun and then i'm like oh i don't know what i gotta figure out if i've got time you know yeah um but yeah since dude if, if I, I cincinnati if you're if you're a toy fan you need to go to cincinnati just yeah. go because there's it's it's just an incredible city they've i've never been to a play i mean florida's got a lot of toy shops but you just go to the toy shops and just talk shop with these people and go see this stuff, go see where uh, all the toys that we love were made. Uh, it, it's just a cool town and it, and it's a fun historical town and you could spend four or five days toy hunting in that area. And the community that Cincinnati has, has uh, 
has performed or have have cultivated over the past few years is, is unlike anything I've ever seen because they all help each other out and they go, well, hey man, I'm looking for this. Well, I don't have it, but he may have it. And then they, oh, may he, I don't have it, but you know, they, they all help each other out because they know somebody that everybody has their own specialty. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just, it's something it's unlike I've ever seen and a community unlike I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And then you hear stories about people picking up $1 prototypes that that's not happening anymore. It's not (laughs) happening anymore, but I've talked to somebody who it happened. So at least once it happened. Once many years ago, and it's not happening anytime soon. No, it, it is fun to walk into a shop and people are like, why, why are you here? I'm like, I'm going to pay $5 for a rocket firing fet. And yeah, they right. At you. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they, know, they know, you know, they're, they're like you and everybody else that walks through this door. So you're not going to find any uh, treasures because there's a lot of people up there that's already working it. Uh, but it's still a cool town to go to. Um, Our buddy... Barry is putting on his own toy show. Yeah. The Mid-South Toy Fest in uh, just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. It's December 9th from 10 to 4. It's the same weekend as the Winter Social, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We can't make it. But I wish I could. Yeah, that'd be a fun. That And Memphis isn't too far away. No. But if you're interested, uh, go to Mid-South Toy Fest on Facebook and you can... Uh, follow the show there and maybe even get tickets. Yeah. Anything yeah. Else? No, that's it. I'm really hoping they'll do Xenia and Cincinnati the same weekend again. Because I know it pissed off a lot of the vendors, but for a seller, I mean, for a buyer, it was an awesome weekend. That's the perfect time to go, yeah. 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 But well, we got... Uh, are we going to Retro Toy Con? Yeah, Retro Toy Con at the middle of the month in is that north carolina south carolina south carolina and greenville i was greenville. just there yeah and then do you just go up take pictures and come home to greenville or I'm, yes, I'm sorry. Char- i no? went to charlotte this week is that what you're talking about yeah i didn't know if yeah. it was for work or not it was work i went up there and took some photos and came back but i did drive through greenville i stopped it i was trying to get okay so lowe's <laughs> has a bunch of haunted mansion inflatables for Halloween and everything yeah. was discounted. And so they had this giant, infl- giant inflatable of the three hitch hike- hiking ghosts, Gus, um, Ezra, and I was going to say Kanan. That's not, it. <laughs> I know his name, Gus. Dang it. Phineas. Phineas. Anyways. And for her? like, no, <laughs> it's a $300 thing. It's like down to $45. So I was stopping on my way home at every Lowe's trying to find the three hitch hiking ghosts. And I just had to get up, give up and say, I just want to go home. Dude, you need when next time you go up through Charlotte, you need to look up in Gastonia. There's a shop up there that's kind of, I don't know if it's still there or not, but like look up toy shop in Gastonia and it, it's on the way to Charlotte and it's, it's yeah. A, it's a nice little stop. Uh, Let's see. Yeah. But Charlotte, dude, Charlotte's got a bunch of shops too. I don't know how much free time you got when you're up there, but it's always a fun. Charlotte is another trip. That's another trip we'd love to make because they got Heroes Con up there. And we just, it's every time it comes up, we got other things going on. Yeah. But Toy Lance uh, is the next big one for us, right? Right. So is the Conyers Toy Show the same weekend? It would be the December 9th of the Conyers Toy Show. Oh. Well, actually, Rogue Fun, I'm not Rogue Fun, uh, the Winter Social always falls on the weekend where you've got the swap meet in the morning, then you've got uh, the Winter Social, and then you've got the Tokanya's Toy Show on Sunday. So it's a fun week. It's a long weekend, but it's it's fun. Yeah. Well. And then there's Toy Lana. Yeah, then there's Toy Lana. Did you also see what Hasbro had to say this week? about us they said thank you for listening to the smugglers galaxy podcast if you could please leave a like and a five-star review of the show anywhere you listen to podcasts if it's allowed it really helps us out and points people to our show you can follow us on social media you can find us on facebook instagram and youtube send us an email or message us we love feedback we'd love to make you part of the show our email address is smugglers galaxy at gmail.com thank you to alfonso riviera for the smugglers galaxy logo Thank you to Levi Waterhouse for the music.
people collect for the love of it hashtag vote with your wallet sabine will be on next week pass on what you've learned be a positive force in the collecting community this is the way this is the way get your prostrate checked (laughs) 